last time we looked at differentiation from first principles where you used this formula to find the derivative of a function we said f dash of x equals the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h where the f dash of x is the gradient or the slope of the function f of x at any given point x. We know from grade 9 that to find the gradient of the function f of x equals 3, the gradient or the slope of that graph is just 0. So instead of doing the whole thing that you did here yesterday, if I refer you back to the question 1e, the answer that you should have got here was that f prime of x, which is the gradient, was 0 because the gradient is the slope or the steepness of the graph that is given. Let's make another example. This one I've created is f of x equals 4x plus 2. If you are to use the long root using first principles, you will also find out that f dash of x which is the gradient of this function will be equal to 4. The gradient of this function is always 4. It's constant 4. The steepness of this function doesn't change. It's always 4. The steepness of this one doesn't change. The gradient of this function is 0. The slope of this function is 0. It's always 0. However, when you look back at b of your work, the equation was f of x equals 3 over x. You can see that that graph is a hyperbola. If I were to draw the graph hyperbola like that, you can see that the steepness here is not the same as the steepness there. The steepness of the function here at point A is not the same as the steepness of the function at point B. Hence, the answer of the steepness should always depend on the value of x. Therefore, we say the gradient of this function of, of f of x at point A will be the same as the gradient of the tangent at point A. And also here at B, the gradient will be the same as the gradient of the tangent at point B. So the answer here for the gradient depends on the value of x. That is why when you did B, your answer for the gradient of x was equal to negative 3 over x squared. Now, we should be looking at an easier way of getting an answer to questions like these ones because those ones are easy to find from grade 9. So, before we can just come to to rules of how to get those things. Let's look at this example one more time. Let's say we are given f of x equals 5x plus 3, and then we've got to find the derivative of this function, meaning we've got to find f prime, meaning we've got to find the gradient. So how to find it? We said if we're given a function, we must find f of x plus h, which means that where there's x there, we put x plus h. So this becomes 5 into x plus h, which is cubed. Therefore, to find the gradient, so we say the gradient or the f dash of x will be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h, which is this. So it's a 5 times the x plus h, which is cubed, minus f of x, which is 5x cubed. And this is divided by h. Now, how do I go about getting the answer? So this becomes the limit as h approaches 0. So simplify this. So it's 5 into. So this would be x cubed. So plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. Then minus 5x cubed. So this is being divided by h. So, which gives us now the limit as h approaches 0 of 
x cubed plus 15 x squared h plus 15 x h squared plus 5 h cubed minus 5 x cubed which gives us the ions on top being divided by an h so we can simplify that we can see that the 5x cubed cancels the 5x cubed which therefore means now i'm left with the limit as h approaches zero so from your previous work you should know now that we've got to factorize the top i'll take out h then i will have 15x squared take out h here is plus 15xh take out h here is plus 5h squared which is divided by an h so we get divided by h thing here so you can see that that h will cancel the h there and therefore now i've got my answer giving me limit as h approaches zero of 15 x squared plus 15 x h plus 5 h squared now i can substitute the value of h as zero where h i can now plug in zero so now the answer will be 15 x squared plus 15 x times a zero plus five times a zero squared because i said i must substitute for h is equals zero and the answer is a 15 x squared what a long way to get an answer to find the derivative of f of x Equal, um, of every x when uh, we've got 5x cubed and the answer is 15x squared. Now we've got to try and find out what, uh, what is the easiest way of getting this thing here. Let's summarize and look at the problem that we just had. So when it was 5x, we said that the final answer that we got for f dash of x was 15x squared. So let's try and generalize and see what how we can get the, the, the 15x squared. So it seems as if the 3 is multiplying the 5 to give us 15. 3 times 5 is 15. And where does that square come from? It's from subtracting 1 from the 3. So take this, you multiply with this, you get 15. So there's an x, then you subtract 1. Similarly, we can do the same thing with this one when we are given a problem like this. So to find f dash or f prime of this function here, so I'll take that 4 and multiply with the 2. 4 times 2 gives me 8, then x. From the 4, I must subtract 1. So 4 minus 1 now gives me 3. Then minus 2, I'll multiply with the minus 5. Minus 2 times minus 5 gives me a plus 10. Now x. Now I must subtract 1 from the top. As I subtracted 1 from 4 to get a 3. Now minus 2 subtract 1. The answer is minus 3. Now what about this one? This is a constant. How do we find the derivative of a constant? We said that when we had a constant the derivative of a constant number is just zero so this give us a zero for the constant so if we were to go further and simplify this we know that in mathematics you can't leave answers with negative exponents so the answer for the derivative is just 8x cubed plus 10 over x cubed now, if I add the zero, it's just the same as this. So that's my answer. So in this case, this is giving us the rule of how to find the derivative of some functions, not all of them. So let's look at this example again. So we take a five, we multiply with that number. We got 15. Then we write x, we subtract one from the top. So here is the rule of differentiation. So if we are given f of x equals ax, exponent n f of x plus ax exponent n therefore the derivative of this function will be we will take the a will multiply with an n so the answer would be a times n 
and then we will write the x which is this and then from n i will subtract one n minus one is just n minus one so that is the rule so if i were to try and apply this maybe in one or two examples further let's look at this one so we can apply that if you look back in our examples you saw that this was 5x so make sure that the x is a numerator x must not be on the denominator so if you look at this one x is in the denominator try and push it up so that it's in the numerator so the f of x this is not a derivative i'm just polishing this first so it's a 2 x now take this up to minus a 2 now it's nice i can now find that derivative so therefore i can find f dash of x because now everything is in order x is in line is a numerator so i'll take this number multiply with this a minus 2 times 2 is minus 4 so x now minus 2 subtract 1 you get minus 3 and the laws of mathematics you can't leave your answer you can't say this is your answer because you can't leave your answer with a negative exponent so your answer would be a negative four so this must have a positive exponent so over x exponent three let's look at this one again this is f of x equals one over square root of x we've got to make sure that it is correct first we've got to move these things but there are other rules that you've got to remember so f of x is the same as one over the square root of x is same as x exponent a half therefore now i'll have to move this thing up so now i've got f of x which is equals to one times x exponent minus a half so therefore now i can apply the rule and find the derivative therefore the f dash of x is equal to the minus a half times one gives you minus one over two then i write my x now minus one over two subtract one that gives you a minus a three over two and the rule now so that's an answer but it's not complete because the rule says you can't leave your exponents negative and therefore my answer is a minus a one over the two then x exponent now three over two like that maybe one or two it looks juicier let's look at this one here so i've got a problem here because you've got that whole thing divided by this so we can just try and rearrange this and rewrite it so this is same as y is equals to x over 3 divided by x over 9 so plus 7 which is divided by x over 9 let's simplify this so y is equals to the x over 3 divided by x over 9 obviously it's 1 over x to the 6 so plus 7 over x exponent 9 now we've got to solve this because we've got to move this up so therefore this is still y is equal to x exponent minus 6 of course 1 if you like so then plus the 7 x to exponent minus 9 now we can apply our rule so to apply our rule we can take this to this now note y is the same as f of x but if they give you y therefore you will say your derivative of this we write it as dy dx you'll get used to it so if it's y is dy dx you write it like this then let's follow the rules so it's minus six times one gives you minus six so x now i must subtract one from there minus six minus one is minus seven then the next one minus nine times a plus seven that is minus 63 x now minus 9 minus 1 that's minus 10 now it's as if we are done but we are not done because the exponent is negative therefore now i've got a minus 6 over x exponent 7 a minus 63 over x exponent 10 that's my answer what about this one there is no way we can separate this like this but we can see that I know this is sum of two cubes and then I can factorize and simplify this let's check this thing here is the same as the factors of this which gives us the long the shorter bracket and then the longer bracket 
So the shorter bracket would be cube root of that, which is t, plus the cube root of that, which is 2. And then the other factor will be t squared minus 2t plus a 4. Remember how to factorize the sum of cubes, sometimes the difference of two cubes. So this thing here is divided by a t plus 2. So when I've got two terms at the bottom, it's better that you start by trying to check whether you can factorize the thing so that it can cancel off. Check this thing here. You can see that the t plus 2 cancels the t plus 2 there. So which means that my answer here is just a t squared minus 2t plus 4. So this is the answer only for this thing here when I'm simplifying it. So when I simplify, I get this. So it's not the derivative yet. So the derivative of this function, so I can say, therefore, the derivative, the derivative of this will be what? We know now what, how to find derivative. You take this number, you multiply with a number, you get 2t. Then you move on to, then you subtract 1, you'll get 1. 2 minus 1 is 1, so the exponent is 1. Let's come to this one. So the exponent here is 1, although it's not a visible 1 there. So I take the 1 and multiply with the, this. So 1 times this is minus 2, and then t exponent 1 minus 1 is a 0, isn't it? And then we said the, co the derivative of, of a constant there is just a constant zero let's simplify this and make it nicer so over as a t 2t exponent 1 is 2t and then minus 2 times t to the 0 what is that it's minus 2 because 2 to the 0 is 1 so that's my final answer so therefore can you now try and do these problems on your exercise books from your grade 11 AP maths book Page 88, exercise 5.3, numbers 1, 2, and 3. Enjoy the exercises. They are nice.